Thanks to Skillshare for supporting this episode of Journey to the Microcosmos. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. For those of you afraid of spiders, the microcosmos probably seems like a safe haven. When you're scanning through a microscopic ocean full of single-celled organisms, the likelihood of a spider crawling across your screen feels comfortably low. The few times we've seen a spider under the microscope, it's because we put it there. But safe as the microcosmos might seem from a surprise spider attack, it would be misleading to pretend that it is completely free of spider-like sightings, because even at this small scale, you could still find yourself subject to an ambush of the arachnid sort. These are water mites, relatives of spiders in that they are also members of the arachnid class, and the resemblance is uncanny, especially with all of those eight legs waving around. But that detail aside, there is something about this water mite that looks more like a cartoon spider, something you might have doodled in a notebook. For one, there's the eyes, those simple dots. Water mite species usually have two pairs, which mainly act to detect light. It's much less intimidating to stare into the eyes of the water mite than into the eight eyes of a spider. Another reason for the cartoon spideriness of some water mites is down to a defining aspect of their shape. Spiders have segmented bodies, with an abdomen that is distinct from the cephalothorax that holds its head, but water mites are not segmented. Instead, those different parts are fused together. In the case of this particular species, the final result is round and kind of adorable. So now we're going to disrupt that cuteness by bringing up a creature that we've talked about before, one that's more closely related to water mites and one that does not evoke any sense of cuteness. We're talking about dust mites, which are part of the same superorder of mites called Acariformes. If you haven't watched our episode about dust mites before, you should check it out after you watch this video, especially if you're looking for motivation to clean your room. Because without spoiling too much, the main thing to know about dust mites is that their poop is its not great. I'm bringing that up now because while water mite poop might not evoke the same concern that dust mite poop does, it is still fascinating. Their excretory system is made up of a large tube connected to a pore. The tube takes in waste from the mite's version of blood called hemolymph, and in the tube the waste is stored as yellow or white crystals. To clear out its storage of crystals, the mite simply moves its muscles to push everything through its excretory pore. From the studies we found on other mites with similar systems, our best guess is that these poops are guanine crystals, produced by the mite's body as it breaks down nutrients. Now, crystal poop is weird, but the weirder thing is that crystalline poop is not the weirdest thing that water mites excrete. But before we get there, let's talk about just how red some of our water mites are. They're so red that they might seem like walking drops of blood. They are not actually chock full of blood, though. The red color is likely some kind of carotenoid that turns the water mite crimson. And for a time, scientists believed that the red color was a way for these species of water mites to flash a warning signal to fish, sort of a do not eat me expressed solely through a threatening hue. But like why? Why did scientists think fish would heed this warning anyway? Why would a fish bother to listen to a water mite when it could be eating the water mite instead. Well, many water mite species have an approach to warding off predators that is sticky. 
Water mites have little globe-shaped organs dotting their bodies called glandularia, each with a little opening and a little bristly hair called a seta. When something, say a fish, brushes up against that hair, it triggers the glandularia into releasing a milky fluid into the water, where it mixes into a tackier, more viscous substance. And for predators, the idea of having to wade through some gloppy mess to get to your food is probably unappealing. So when the scientists saw in the context of their own experiments that fish seemed to quickly stop trying to eat water mites. They decided that the red coloring was water mites way of telling fish we're the sticky prey. But while it's possible the fish do learn to not pick out these water mites for food, the idea that their red color exists specifically as a warning to predators does not hold up to the basics of how these particular species live. Red water mite species tend to be found in transient pools of water, places that fish don't often find themselves. So the likelihood that they would have evolved this trait for the purpose of warning fish is low. It's more likely that the pigments are a way of protecting them from ultraviolet light. It just maybe happened to also protect them from fish as well. And the sticky fluid that makes them unappealing to fish also has another use, reproduction. In one genus called Arenarus, the males use it to hold the females still during copulation. This is part of a wider spectrum of weird reproductive behaviors. On one end, there are the species like the ones we just mentioned, which engage very directly and physically with each other. On the other end of the spectrum, there are water mite species where the sexes don't feel the need to interact at all to make reproduction happen. They don't communicate, they don't touch. The males simply deposit spermatophores somewhere for the female counterparts to find them and pick them up. And then, somewhere between the directly copulating water mites and the cold shoulder water mites, there are the dancers. They're sort of like the second group in that males drop off their spermatophores, but they actually stick around, mostly so they can draw females in and help them find the spermatophores. And this is where the dancing comes in. Sometimes this involves vibrating their legs to mimic their favorite prey, drawing the attention and aggression of wandering females. Other times, though, this means waltzing together as a pair, moving in circles with careful pauses to pick up the spermatophores. We obviously don't have a video of that or else we would be showing it to you, but at some point, some scientist watched that happen. Someone watched the dance of the mating water mites and they carefully documented it, just like someone saw the mitiverse fish and the crystal poops and the many other strange things that make up the lives of water mites. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we explore the unseen world that surrounds us. And we'd like to say thank you again to Skillshare for supporting this video. Maybe you are a little overwhelmed with all of the spidery imagery in this video. Well, how about spending some time with a different kind of spider? On Skillshare, you can learn everything from how to draw Spider-Man to how to transplant a spider plant. So whether you're looking to flex your creative muscles or take care of that unhappy houseplant in the corner of your room, Skillshare is there for you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves to learn and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. With so much to explore and real-world projects to create, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads to distract you, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused on leveling up your skills. And if you're one of the first thousand people to click the link in the description, you can get a one-month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. The names on the screen right now, these are our Patreon patrons. They're the people who make it possible for us to do this thing. And I am so grateful to you because before this channel started, I knew that I would be interested in this stuff, but I did not know anything about it yet. And now I know so much. And I hope that by coming on this journey with us, you do too. And actually the video in the background here of these little mites you're seeing, that's actually from my microcosmos microscope, I found some mites in my local pond, like the same week that we were making this video. So I sent them to our editor and they're getting edited in. 
If you want to see more from our master of microscopes, James Weiss, you can check out Jam and Germs on Instagram. And if you want to see more from us, there is always a subscribe button somewhere nearby.